All right, hi everyone, welcome back to 3D Deviation. So in this video, we wanna cover the third case of partial fraction decomposition and its use as an integration technique. Now, cases three and four are way out there, used a lot less than techniques one and two, just because you're dealing with a lot more complicated um, denominators in cases three and four, that being we're dealing with quadratic factors. So these are factors that do not decompose into real linear factors. So remember back to your algebra one or two days when you have your function, or you have a parabola of some sort, right? And your parabola maybe looks something like this. And um, what you notice is you have no real intercepts, right? But the fundamental theorem of algebra says that you've got two imaginary. Um, two imaginary roots, but we do not want to concern ourselves with imaginary roots. We will do that in complex analysis if we have the audacity to make a course on complex analysis in the future. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that, that, that would come later. All that that means for us, if we get um, some factor where we have a quadratic that we can't factor on the bottom, then that means we're going to need to use case three or four. We're going to go over case three today, so let's see if we can make it through this alive. All right. So case three says that de the denominator has non-repeating quadratic factors. So back in case one, we had non-repeating linear factors, but now we have non-repeating quadratic factors. So like say something like one over um, x squared plus one times x squared plus four, stuff like that. And then we're integrating of obviously with respect to x. So let's give the abstract example as we've been doing. We say p of x over q of x is equal to, now we've got um, coefficients up here that have x dependence or, or of order one. So we've got a, a sub one of x, a sub one x plus b sub one over a sub one x squared plus b sub one, all the way up to a sub n x plus b sub n over a sub n x squared plus b sub n. So this is kind of similar abstract stuff that we've been dealing with in cases one and two as well. But um, as always, an example seems to help everything out. So let's see if we can do that. So I would like us to integrate 2x squared minus x plus 4 over x cubed plus 4x dx. Now, unlike the last example, this example, we do not need to worry about long division of polynomials because we've got the degree on the top lower than the degree on the bottom, which means that this is already in our kosher form for dealing with partial fractions. All right, so now what we would like to do is we'd like to factor this down here and verify that we have non-repeating um, quadratic factors or a linear factor down there if we get lucky. Let's see. So if we factor the bottom term, we are going to get the integral of 2x squared minus x plus 4. Numerator stays the same. And we can take out an x there, and that's pretty much as far as we go, and then we get x times x squared plus 4. Okay, so now you can see that our partial fraction is really going to have two separate little fractions. We're going to have this x term, and we're going to have this x squared plus 4 term. Okay, so let's have a look. So we will do our decomposition. So 2x squared minus, four, minus x plus 4 is equal to x times x squared plus 4. And we can um, make that equal to a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 4. So when you've got these quadratic factors, you do a constant x plus constant. So now what we want to do, as always, is we want to multiply by the lowest common denominator, which is going to be this guy here. So we get 2x squared minus x plus 4 is equal to a times x squared plus 4 plus bx plus c all times x. And this is nice because we'd like it when we have these all in with our little order term there, because then we can map those back to our left-hand side. But we would like to expand this a times x squared plus 4 term. So we get um, ax squared plus 4a plus bx plus c all times x, and then we can consolidate again. So we get a times x squared is equal to bx plus c times x plus 4a. And remember that we've got an x here, so this will also be mapped to the x squared terms. All right, so let's now do that and create our system of equations. So when we create our system of equations, we're going to get um, from our mapping back there that we talked about, we're going to get a plus b equals 2. Remember, we set them equal to the coefficients um, of similar degree. 
and then we get 4a equals 4 and c equals negative 1. Well, this is a pretty easy system of equations because we, they're giving us c, they're giving us a very easy way to find a, then we can just plug in for b, or plug in for a, solve for b, there you go. Then we get our coefficients. So we get a equals 1, b equals 1, and c equals negative 1. All right, so now we know that 2x squared minus x plus 4 over x cubed plus 4x is equal to 1 over x plus x minus 1 over x squared plus 4. Wonderful. Now we are going to um, do the honor of integrating both sides, and we are going to get that the integral of 1 over x plus um, x minus 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. Now we've got a problem. This guy looks like we could make it a little bit nicer. So let's try that. So what we are going to do is we're going to separate this fraction and we're just going to make it separated into x over x squared plus 4 minus 1 over x squared plus 4. So we get the integral of 1 over x plus x over x squared plus 4 minus 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. Now this guy and this guy we should have no problem with. That's an ln integral, the ln integral, and this is a u substitution which you should be doing mentally by now. And this guy is what we might have trouble with. But if you remember what happens when we take the derivative of the arctangent function. So if I have tangent minus 1 of x and I do a derivative of that, well, if you remember back from there, you may have derived this through implicit differentiation. You get 1 over 1 plus x squared. And we can edit this a little bit, and that is going to make stuff really nice for us. And we are going to get, um, as our final answer, um, the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus one-half natural log of absolute value of x squared plus 4 from that simple u sub, and then minus one-half inverse tangent of x over 2 plus c. That is our final answer, and 